This is the Four Man Rush. Hello, Panther fans, and welcome to another podcast of the Four Man Rush. I'm your host, Timmy Vio, here with the legend himself, Kevin Avery, of the Four Man Rush. Ha <laughs> uh, Will might be joining us later on. Um, he's he's in a uh, you know JLB situation, so we'll see what happens with that. And um, hopefully he'll hop in here and uh, give us some some of his football wisdom. Um, otherwise, uh, Kevin and I are going to sit here and talk to you guys uh, briefly about the L we took. Um, I know we we've covered most of the stuff, but uh, no, we'll, we'll we'll hop on there and just just fine tooth that a little bit, and then we'll get into the the nuts and bolts of the situation with the New Orleans Saints heading down there to see what's up with Drew Brees. And uh, for the first time ever, I think uh, the, the Panthers have maybe a little uh, little voodoo up their sleeves, so to say, no pun intended, with uh, our, our OC and our uh, current quarterback just, you know, having some uh, knowledge on the New Orleans Saints firsthand. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But, yeah. That's how it's going to roll tonight, folks. Hold on to your hats. The four man rush is on the scene. Kevin Avery. Um, well, let's uh, let's just uh, hop on the uh, that Bears game a little bit, man. We'll uh, we'll we'll touch on some uh, some uh, pointers and keep it moving. Yeah, well, hop on is a great analogy to use on because that's damn sure what happened to the Panthers uh, this past Sunday at Bank of America State. They got hot on, curb stomp, um, rock bottom. I mean, Oof. to look at the score, you would think it was a competitive game. And, and not to take anything away, we, you know, it was still a one score game, but I'm just looking at it from a physicality point of view. It's like who set the tone? You know who came in there with 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 the with the big daddy attitude? Who came in there with the, you know, oh I get the big piece of chicken mind frame? Like it was strictly the Chicago Bears from 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 the gate. You know I shared earlier, I shared earlier on our on our Twitter mm-hmm. account that you folks can check out the first six plays of the game. Tim, it was just, <laughs> I mean they literally <laughs> dared us to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, they they literally just wanted to let us know. Look here, I know we ain't flashy, but what what we is is we nasty, and they just they just dem- they just took over from from the jump. They dominated the uh, they dominated the trenches, especially from their defensive line point of view. Um, every one of our five offensive linemen took turns, you know, just getting abused, getting um, just outplayed, outflanked, just, it was just, Tim, it was just hard. It was just hard to watch. You know, I was checking out the all 22, you know, earlier today and I'm just sitting there watching and I just, <laughs> you know, for everybody to want to throw the blame on, on Teddy Bridgewater for this game is, is huh. really <laughs> <laughs> like, let you, let you have been behind that offensive line with that coming at you, see how you would have done. Yeah, I mean, yeah, don't I get him wrong? I know he's quarterback and he paid, blah blah blah. But this really shouldn't be all on him. Now, did he make some mistakes he shouldn't have? Yes. So we're we're not gonna, you know, give him a, a free pass here. But to solely place a large majority of blame strictly on Teddy Bridgewater is just is just factually unfair. It's not right. Yeah. Um, you know, this you know from the first possession with the uh, tipped up ball to Robbie Anderson that turned into an interception. Well, that's the third play of the game. What happened? Well, on second down, after nearly avoiding getting a safety, we were set up on the half yard on our own half yard line, and the same exact defensive tackle, defensive end line stunt they did on second down to sack um, Teddy Bridgewater. They did the exact same play with the same two players the next down. At this time, they got a quarterback hit on Teddy at the back of the zone, which forced him to throw that ball the way he did to Robbie Anderson. Now, it was on Robbie to have caught a cleaner ball than that, but he popped it up and that allowed the defender to corral it for the interception. So, you know, that's, you know, shit happens to him. You know, that's just that's just how it is. I think that had the line been able to protect better, you know, he mm-hmm. could have made a better throw or found a uh, a better 
option to, to throw to. But at the end of the day, um, the Bears just really just took it to us. And from a physicality point of view, they were clear to the better team. They let us know that we are not ready to face elite play. You know, the last two weeks we had said, oh, Panthers haven't gotten off any sacks. Well, after the first <laughs> well, after the first series, the Bears let us know it's going to be a long day. We, long we, we, we're, day we're unlike anything you've ever faced this far. Yeah. Um, outside of Tampa, who's uh, who's really coming on. And they, whew, you know, what they did to Green Bay, that was, ah, yeah. I that open. whole part. Yeah. So, um, but, but yeah, it just seemed like the team, they, you know, they managed to keep it close, you know, but, we, you know, we had uncharacteristic things happen. We had Mike Davis fumbling, which he rarely ever does. Ever. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of, you know, looking over at the stats, I mean, we were really, we were really um, limited here. You know, of course, outside of missing Chris McCaffrey, you could tell that we was missing Curtis Samuel, missed a third down for us. Reason why I say that was uh, coming into this week before he missed this game, Curtis Samuel led the NFL in the most receptions on third down that converted into first downs. Mm -hmm. Panthers on third down with three of 13. Coincidence? I think not. Um, you know, we had 62 plays to the Bears, 64. Time of possession slightly favored us, 31 minutes to, to 29. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, statistically, when you look at the numbers, you would think that uh, we had a better day. But the fact that for another game, we didn't sack their quarterback and our quarterback got sacked four times, that was the key. Now, what was a positive? Our run defense. They ran the ball 25 times for um, 63 yards, which is 2.5 yards per carry. Easily our best performance against a run. Facts. You know, for it to be ran again, ran at us that many times. That was Thanks. that that was something to really look at as an improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had just some horrible momentum killing pillages at the worst time. Eight penalties for 69 yards. Yes. Uh, it just and, and and three turnovers, um, two interceptions by Bridgewater and a fumble by uh, Mike Davis. So, you know, for all those other stats that were in our favor, turnovers will neutralize any stat that you may have if if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So, um, True. yeah, man, it was it was just tough sledding around. And then from a defensive point of view, I mean, like I said. We, we gave ourselves, in spite of all of this abuse we took, we still gave ourselves a chance at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we wasn't able to cash that check, and, and the Bears got to take the dub um, back to uh, back up north with them. So they're sitting at, what, f uh, five and one now? Yep. Panthers dropped to three and three. Yep. Um, you know, in the post game, you know, we had a little, little Bears fan, you know, flapping his job, talking about, you know, we wasn't ready. Uh, let us get healthy and um, – we uh we 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 snagged that last playoff spot. We'll yeah, we'll see right. we'll see that ass again in January. We'll yeah. we'll show you what a full clip looks like next time. Yeah 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 yeah. They they talking at the side of their neck on that one. We we're missing two critical offensive pieces, and uh, we, we still have a young defense. And that defense was that defense was wasn't doing that bad. Again, going back to you look at the stats, um, you know. Granted, they were working with a short, short field most of the time, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Foles finished with uh, under 200 yards passing. You know, they had 261 total yards throughout the game. Our, our defense had us in the game. We we were down by a touchdown in, in the waning, waning minutes of the, of, the, of the entire game, folks. We, we, uh, we have a full slot of weapons and a better blocking scheme going on against that Bears defense. We pull that out. Matter of fact, folks, if you think about it, like Kevin said, we we were in reach at the end of the game after three turnovers, after all those miscues, eight penalties. Uh, we were still in it. We were still in it. So if you're a Bears fan and you think <laughs> you see us with a healthy roster in December, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Shit. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> oh man yeah so yeah bears are behind us that's cool we on the new orleans we on the new orleans we live and learn man 
Um, it'd be but nice to get another thing, division win. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, but one thing I was going to say, Tim, is that what you spoke on is the positive that I took away from the game. Again, we don't we don't deal with more of victors right here. We understand that we're yeah. rebuilding, uh, but you know we're 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 competitive. You know, every single one of our games. You know, we we were in it to the last piece. You know, back during the all season, you know, I said it numerous times. My especially of twenty twenty was with five minutes left in the game. If it is a one score game, I can I can be I can live I can live with the results. And right. if you just told me that we would be three and three without Christian McCaffrey, uh, also now without Kawan Short, with five rookies starting. You know, I would have called you a lie, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. I'd ask you, "Hey, let me let me say what it is you what you what you got." You know, let me, <laughs> yeah, let me hit the block with that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know, so I, hey, the, the, you know, there's no excuses. You know, we 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 beat our, we've beaten ourselves more than the other teams have. But if any team actually was just physically dominating against us, I have to say it was the Bears. I, Bears. I can't, I can't, I can't ignore the fact that they just completely just dismantled any type of rhythm that we could have established in the trenches to allow things to happen. Because you know, looking at all twenty-two today, Tim. Oh, there were several opportunities, but yeah. we we had the, we had the time needed to uh, to take advantage of it. So yeah, yeah Teddy had them happy feet all day, man. Yeah, he was definitely dancing. Hey, he led he led the team in rushing, didn't he? Um, look at the stats here, rushing. Maybe nah, not that much. No, nah, no, nah, by four yards he missed it. Uh, Mike Davis had fifty two yards. Teddy Bridgewater had forty eight yards on eight carries. Almost, almost, almost. He had a higher average, but. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Now, 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 one positive sign I did see was a ten yard run by Trent Cannon. I like seeing that. You know the um, mm-hmm. the undrafted free agent that we picked up. Mm-hmm. Um, he can't. He, he got shot. Look like he got shot out of a cannon too. Yeah, <laughs> he got some wheels, boy. Boy, <laughs> don't play with that boy. Mm-hmm. You know, but you know, it it would be failed if we didn't um if we didn't speak on. Uh, Mr. DJ Moore here, Tim. We we got to speak on it. You know, we, we got to. We got to. We, we got to channel our, our inner Jadarius McCoy here. <laughs> Jay, what's up, JD? <laughs> and and just and just call and just call it out, DJ Moore, sir, young man. Um, we have a problem. Uh, you're near the top of the league in drops, sir. You were targeted 11 times for five receptions for 93 yards. Now, usually five catches, nine three yards, pretty decent day for a wide receiver. But these 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 drops at the most critical of moments. Uh, I understand that the one at the very end was the uh, the route was different. So you know, if you was to give a pass one, but it was other ones that Man. the ball just hit you right there, square in the hands, and Man. you didn't come through, bro. You, you didn't. You, you didn't yeah. come through. Um, Mm-hmm. I, yeah, man. I mean, it just. I mean, Robbie's going to take his. He's going he to take his catches, man. He gonna, he's going to take those targets from him. He's earned it. Yeah, because Robbie, believe it or not, was only targeted five times in this game. And how many catches did he have, Kevin? Four catches for 77 yards. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. So, I mean. DJ. Right. Um. Trent Cannon had a couple of catches out the backfield, two for 15. Um, Key Kirkwood, who, uh, sad story here. It was good that he came back from IR, but he just went right back after this game. He was placed on um, short-term IR, IR today. Uh, he made a debut with a nice 13-yard catch um, on two targets. Um, a little used tight ends, each one. Ian Thomas, Chris Manhurts both had a catch. Mm-hmm. Um Oddly enough, uh, Mike Davis was only targeted three times. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that, you know, because Mike Davis usually be uh, targeted anywhere between eight to ten times right. since he's been playing. So that that's just let you know how good this Bears front seven was, you know, with the linebacker play that they had to uh, yeah. uh, to neutralize. They basically locked down anything underneath and dared us to beat them over the top. Yeah. But with the pass rush that they had, again, we didn't have the time needed time. to uh, – uh, to make it happen. Oh, man. Those five and seven step drops were shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you're lucky to get that off. But when when Teddy had his feet set, man, he got the ball downfield. We we heard him. Uh, but you know, then we get in that short field situation in the red zone, and the Bears defense in the red zone's top three across the board. So that's just just to show what kind of day they had in our backfield, Tim. The Bears had uh, eight and a half tackles for losses. God Almighty. To go along with four sacks, uh, six quarterback hits. I mean, they literally mm. lived in our backfield. I mean, sure. Khalil Mack was Khalil Mack. Um, you know, he had one sack, two tackles for loss. Uh, it was just just mm. looking at it. They just pretty much shared the wealth. I mean, it was it was just complete and utter, you know, dominance by their by their front. So wow. Chicago, they're, they're they're not winning with style, but they're, they're winning with physicality and. And um, not beating themselves. I mean, they kept their quarterback clean, which is something we had previously done. Yep. Um, so that's just pretty much what it came down to. Now, I will say this. Uh, this Panther secondary that on paper coming to season we thought was going to be the worst in the league, they had another solid game. Um, you know, Bears receiver, their top wide receiver, um, Allen Robinson, was held to five catches on 53 yards on nine targets. Oof. Yeah. Um, Their other starting wide receiver, Anthony Miller, uh, was held to uh, three catches for eight yards. Wow. (laughs) You know, so this this secondary is, uh, particularly corners, is grinding. I mean, Rasu Douglas. Yeah. um, Dante played that game, right? um, Most of the game? Yeah, Dante played the game um, here as well. Again, another solid effort from Corn Elder. Yes. Um, at Nickelback. Um, Got to mention Sam Franklin, who came in for injured um, Justin Burris and um, played in well, made some um, nice impact plays. Yep. Um, you know, it, it was just, um, you know, the defense is, is, is give, they're giving us a chance to, to, you know, keep it within striking distance if our offense could have ever um, gotten a rhythm here. So. Mm. But um, it, it just it just wasn't our day, you know. And clearly, from a physical standpoint, the Bears were a better team. But uh, like I said before, holler us on, on a healthy note, and a, and a, you know, once the calendar turn, and we'll see how 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 it goes. Yeah, we'll we'll turn that around. I, I have faith, I have faith in that. I think we'll turn that around. We were in this game. We gave them that game. Yeah, that's, that's that's obvious. We we gave the Bears that game. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it was good to see Jeremy Chan get his first interception. Yeah, yeah. As well. <laughs> it was funny. He jumped early on that ball, too. He was so excited. <laughs> yeah, and definitely. And, and and another rookie helped him. You know, my main man, Derrick Brown, who, who had another two more tackles for losses um, here as well. He was one, uh, him and Zach Kerr, that got inside push to uh, force foes. Uh, to throw that ball like that, that Jeremy Chen took advantage of. So mm. that rookie to rookie connection was uh, was really working, mm. um, you know. But I'm looking at our, you know, obviously the biggest ice on our defense is our linebacker play. I'm, I am highly disappointed, <sighs> man. I am. Yeah, Shaq for the for the extension of money we paid him after he waited. Um, you 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 can't tell that he's been with Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis throughout his career. You, it just doesn't show. I mean, Shaq, six tackles. Tahir Whitehead, five tackles. I mean, but that's it. You know, we used to send linebackers with 16 and 15 tackles. <laughs> Facts. You know, this this is just... Uh, and then you, have, then you have Whitehead talking about how Chin sets the tone on the defense. A rookie, yeah. He caught, he caught that on Twitter. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm like... I, I have respect for you doing that way. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you being a good leader and all, you want to hype the kid up, give him some confidence, but he's the tone setter, not the captains on the defense, really. Right. That whole part. Whew. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. And another solid game for Rasul Douglas. Uh, he had three pass breakups. Yep. Um, as well, as far as our numbers, we had three tackles for losses, eight pass breakups. We did have nine quarterback hits. Brian Burns oh, leading the way with, with with three, but we, we just can't we just can't get them on the ground with it. Um, these yeah. quarterbacks really 
early coming with the uh, quick release. Yeah, and Foles is um, Foles is stronger than he looks. He's yeah, he really tough is. To get down. Yeah. So, um, man, yeah, we we were causing havoc back there, just didn't translate into turnovers like the the Bears defense. Right. So, it's all good, Panther fans. It's all good. We still got a lot of football to play. And we have a team that's going to continue to grow. That's obvious. They've, they've grown each and every week. And I just think they came out a little stale, and it, it was too much to overcome with that type of defense in your face. Uh, so it's all good, all right. man. Because now we get to go to the Saints, which have a hard time stopping folks. <laughs> <laughs> mm, Teddy going to get his gravy and rice. <laughs> Creole style, what's up? Gee, uh, all right, so yeah, we're heading to uh, good old New Orleans on uh, Sunday. Uh, I'm going to face old Drew Brees and the Peyton led Saints division foes. Um, I think I think I hate them as equal. Well, I hate them a little bit less than the Falcons. I can't stand the Falcons. I just can't. can't stand but you know. <laughs> <laughs> all three division rivals get equal hate from me. I don't discriminate. All of them get the bird. So take that. Take that's that. Tampa Bay. That's Atlanta. And that's New Orleans. I don't discriminate the hate. Take them. Take them. Yeah, all y'all can take it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, so so we're going to go up against the Saints team who is uh, three and two coming off of a bye week, and um, you know they play some of our some of the same opponents we've gone up against. Uh, they. Uh, but they also uh, had to struggle with the Chargers, um, and they took an L by who was the other team that took an L by? I forget. Uh, Green Bay, I believe. Green Bay, yep. You know, and Green Bay got thumped by Tampa. So I mean, you you never know, folks. You never know. Um, but we do know one thing about Teddy Bridgewater coming off of, coming off of a loss. That kid's dialed in. Right. So, I mean, that's that's something we can take along with it. And um, do you know, are we going to get Christian back for this game? Um, all indications is uh, it's not likely that he'll come back. Okay. Um, for this game, it would have been nice. Nice, too. But like you said, we, um, you know, we, um, you know, running back's not the issue. Running back production is not the no. issue, per se. Uh, at this point in time, although we don't have him, Chris McCaffrey would turn some of these four or five yard runs into bigger gains. But you know, with this being his first injury that he's had, I'm I'm, I'm perfectly okay with you know taking all the time that it needs for him to uh, to come back. Like I say, this is this is a rebuild. We're competitive, but right. you know we want to we want to make sure we definitely uh, protect our, our long term investment. Mm. Um, it says and let some of these other young guys who say they hunger for reps let let them show what they can do. Respect that, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so I mean, we haven't beaten the Saints in a while. Okay, two seasons. Yeah, that was oh uh, oh Cal Allen's first win when uh, at the end of the uh, 2018 season was. Uh, when we ended uh, week 17 in New Orleans, yep. that's pretty much after they had locked up their uh, playoff seed. And, you know, after the first quarter, they just kind of, you know, let the backups play. Ironically, which was Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, ain't that something, folks? Right. So, I mean, we, we got we got a bone to pick, man. You know, we done went down to Atlanta and broke that losing streak. So maybe it's time to go to, to uh, good old New Orleans and, Putting some work down there too. Um, so, uh, that was a, what do you think, Kevin? What what do, what do we need to do? Obviously, I mean, it's, it's, I know it sounds kind of redundant. But what we do? What do we need to do to win the game? But again, the main thing we need to do to win the game is number one, and always on the road, is protect the ball. No turnovers. Uh, any any time that we've uh, lost to the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans, it's it's been turnover induced even when we've had a, a high, high, high scoring offense it was you know we would lose shootouts because we would just had that untimely turnover at the wrong time so number one thing is is protecting the football um, second thing is is uh, win on third downs 
got to got to got to keep Breeze and offense sitting on the sidelines, uh, drinking water and 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 looking at the game. We mm-hmm. we definitely got to make sure that we win the time of possession, and also make sure that when we score, which leads into um, some numbers we've got to talk about here in the red zone. We need touchdowns, not field goals. Mm-hmm. And if there was ever a time that we can improve our red zone stats, this game coming here against New Orleans Saints is something that that we should be chomping at the bit to really, uh, really take advantage of. This uh, this this current New Orleans Saints defense is seen like it's back to its old ways how how it's been known for a majority of the last past decade. Mm. Now, the last few years, a hey, they've been one of the uh, top five to ten units. In the NFL, but prior to 2017, they were um, um, they were downright, you know, toothless on defense. <laughs> so it looks like some of those ways have uh, have definitely uh, shown back up. So uh, this is definitely a game that we can get healthy offensively and and to reestablish not only confidence but uh, execution as well. And just the bottom line is this is just a this is a divisional rival. We simply just do not like New Orleans, you know, from Cam Jordan to his with his arrogance, with his, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. Sean Payton with his, you know, arrogant ways with his smug look. I mean, mm-hmm. all of these all of these, you know, things are a reason that, you know, if nothing else that, you know, just, you know, uh, we just don't like the Saints. That's just no other way to put it here. So it's, it's some current Panther players that are coming back to the Superdome um, here as well. We was talking about earlier, uh, Teddy Bridgewater for one. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, Eli Apple spent the last two years uh, playing in New Orleans as well. Yeah. You know? So we'll see if he's going to be healthy enough to uh, uh, play and contribute. Uh, offensive Joe Brady was there two years in 2017 and 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, here, so yeah, we definitely got some um, players who, um, some people that's coming back that that will love nothing else than to to snatch a dub and um, out the Bayou and bring it back here to the uh, to the Carolina. So um, that's initially what I'm looking at when it uh, come to the uh, come to the Saints. No doubt, no doubt. Um, and you know, I, I honestly think that you know if we we can establish a run on the Saints. Mm-hmm. Um, from from what I was looking at, man, and I would really like to get that play action going with with, with Teddy and Robbie. Um, I I don't remember. I mean, I hate to touch back on the Chicago game, but I don't think we really utilized the play action um, play action scheme as much as we did in the previous games because of that of that defense. But with the New Orleans defense, I truly think we can establish a run, get get a couple of those you know quick play action you know. Uh, you know, uh, you know, quick slant type of action going over the middle, man, and get sucked right over the linebackers' heads and get to get that going, man. I'd be awesome. So, but anyway, so what what do you what do you see us doing on defense, man? How are we going to disrupt Breeze? I know, I know, what Breeze has, hasn't seen Brown face to face yet, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah, as far as affecting Drew Brees, the best way, the most effective way, um, not with just us when we had success, but just in the league in general, is is general interior pressure. Brees is a pocket passer, so this is definitely the game where uh, we need our defensive tackles to set the tone for us early and often. This, you know, we we need to we need to do to the Saints what the Bears did to us. That's come out and smack you around. Uh, from the jump, I believe the Saints are also missing a couple of their um, offensive linemen uh, for this game. Now, they do have a, a stud at center, which a couple of years ago, I was kind of hoping we would have drafted uh, Eric McCoy out of Texas A&M. Hmm. Um, he's quickly in two years has shown himself to be one of the um, more um, dominant young centers that's coming up in the game. So that will be a good matchup and a good battle. But as far as like their their guard play, I think that's something that that we should definitely try to exploit. Now with missing Kawan Short, uh, you know may not have the ability to exploit it quite as much. But if there is some opportunities there. It will be attacking them uh, through their guards on the on the B gaps, uh, pr- um, particularly. Um, you know when it comes to. Our defensive scheme. As far as 
Uh, as far as covering him, we'll we'll see if uh, Mike Thomas makes his return. He hasn't played since week one. Um, it was the ankle injury, but he looked like he's been having some diva moments lately and get into a fight with one of his teammates. And uh, I don't know, really falling out with Coach Sean Payton. So uh, we, we're going to see what's uh, what's going on with that, um, so you know, good. here. Yeah, so we just got to see what's going on. But defensively, uh, you know, our cornerbacks is going to be a big test. Uh, they still, even without Thomas, they still have Emmanuel Samuels and Trey Con Smith, who have really uh, been picking it up lately. I'm mm-hmm. um, here for the Saints, so um, our cornerbacks again is going to be uh, going to be tested. Um, now, I'm just going to be real. The part that scares me though is again our linebackers. I mean, yeah, I was going to say Jared Cook's probably going to get off, bro. Jared Cook and Alvin Kamara are. Oh my uh, gosh, jeez. <laughs> Man, <laughs> yeah. So if if, if anybody is chomping on a bit from the Saints side, they're probably looking at linebackers and be like, "Oh, is this what it's like post Keeklin Thomas Davis?" All right, bet. You know, <laughs> Let, yeah, look, let's run the plays. <laughs> yeah, let's let's run the plays that we used to have to audible dial. Of. We can run those now, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> you know, because Drew Brees said Luke Keekley would call out at least fifty six percent of their plays yep. pre snap. Yeah, so. Hey, like, what the hell? God, man. I miss Luke. But, yeah. Man, don't we all? <laughs> it, it is what it is, yeah, right? It is what it is, man. It is what it is. But, um, you know, Latavius Murray and uh, Alvin, I mean, they, they're putting their work together, man. They got six rushing touchdowns together, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you know, things of like that. I mean, they, they're, they're putting in work. So, we're going to have to look out for that. And then you put... You know, you put Jared on top of that, man. You know he's long too, bro. I mean, it's right. You know, our coverage, our coverage skills on the linebacker position is, is not. Is, it was already hard last year because he was getting off on us last year. I mean, I can't imagine what this year's gonna look like. Hell, we had Luke last year. So yeah, yeah. But if I was a bet man, knowing how arrogant and saying, I, I think the Saints are gonna be looking to try to look at our run defense and try to run the ball at least four different. I think they're just gonna try to pound away and try to protect Drew Brees and. And that um, noodle arm of his that he's <laughs> uh, that he's got by just simply uh, running the ball and, and working off play action. So uh, mm. I hope that this, you know, the, I hope we was able to gain some confidence in our run defense uh, from what we did against Chicago because I, I look at the Saints looking at like this. Okay, we're just gonna line up and just you know run it down there. We're gonna take, we're gonna dominate time of possession um, here, and we're and we're just gonna you know we're just gonna take their soul. So I would imagine that would be uh, what they do because like I said, they got two running backs that's definitely capable of mm. uh, doing some serious damage in the run game with um, Alvin Kamara and uh, Latavius Murray. So sure. um, yeah, with the way our linebacker play has been and just our run defense overall this year, uh, that would be my concern uh, greatly. So the best I can hold for is bend but don't break and hold them to field goal attempts. Yeah, man. Kind of money. I'm I'm looking at Alvin Kamara's stats, man. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's about to. Oh, he, so he 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 already has 38 receptions for 395 yards, right? 10 yards per reception, three touchdowns. Yeah, he has a he has a catch um, that that he took for 52 yards. <sighs> I'm afraid you're right, bro. Yeah. They're going to try to run the ball on us, man. They'll come at us for mm. sure. Um, so what kind of strategy do you think would work on our behalf in terms of, of you know, putting up points, especially in the red zone, man? I mean, they, they, I, know, I know they've talked about, you know, working on the red zone. They as in, you know, um, coach and I mean, both coaches, OC and Rule and, you know, Teddy. I mean, everybody's talking about getting stuff ready uh, for the red zone, but – what can we do to make sure that we're successful in the red zone, Kev? Well, for me, it goes back to establishing the tone in the trenches, you know, setting up the run, uh, play action. Mm-hmm. This is a game that ideally I would love to see our tight ends have a breakout game because the Saints really, I mean, it's, it's not that we're that much better ourselves, but the Saints really struggle in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I think that this is something that – 
uh, that's something that is going to be there for us to take advantage. It's just a matter of if. So, again, if, if the offensive line comes in pissed off and take it to them and make this um, – take it personal within themselves to execute how they should, then I think it's going to open up tons of opportunities in the red zone. Um, you know, keeping Teddy clean and, and open up running lanes for our backs is, is going to be the key in the red zone. Um, I feel like our passing game can get us from 20 to 20, but when we get them last 20 yards in the red zone, I think that's where that's where you got to got to see offense line show up. And, you know, if, if Larry is here right now, I can hear him now that we're not built like that. To a degree, he has a point, but um you know, you, you got to do what you got to do what it takes to get the job done. And I look at this as an opportunity for us to redeem ourselves, uh, to um, get back into this NFC South race um, here because, uh, you know, Tampa Bay fans are really feeling themselves right now after that dismantling <laughs> of uh, Green Bay. It's too early. Right. So, um yeah, so we we uh we need this game to keep ourselves not only you know self confidence but to keep us rele- relevant in this race to uh, get back to our get back to our winning ways. So um, it's definitely important for us uh, to you know have a winning record in our division, and you know we got one we're already one and one. So to go two and one uh, versus the Saints. And just to mention, just a quick look ahead. After this game, we got the Thursday night game um, at home against the Falcons. Mm. So we got a chance to have a uh, to get a really good, a good, a good string, a good uh, push here within our own division with opportunities to take advantage of teams that are looking uh, more vulnerable this year than they have in the past. So you know, if we can just come with it. And like I say, don't turn the ball over, uh, convert on third downs and establish a tone in the trenches, which this team will, which the Saints will allow us the opportunity to do so. If we take it, then I think we can, um, I think we can bring a, a, a dub back from the Big Easy. I agree. I agree. We, we see what happens when we're clicking on all cylinders, folks. We're hard to stop. And each each game we lost this season, we've we've we stopped ourselves. So we play a clean game. I agree, bro. We, we're gonna we're gonna put up points on this team. Bro, so we make Drew Brees one dimensional with our front. <laughs> oh yeah, that's another way we can neutralize that running game. It's to put up points and make make them have to throw that ball down the field, man. That's uh, that'd be a nice way to, to neutralize that running game because uh, Drew Brees is a master at play action, master at it. Um, yeah. So what you, what you think, man? What's your prediction on this one? <sighs> Predictions. <sighs> <laughs> it's tough, man. Division games. It's tough. It's tough to predict that shit. Yeah, it, it it really is, and because New Orleans is at home, um, I know the offense gonna get up, but. If our injury report works out in our favor and we um we get some a couple of players back, yeah. um we'll find out more about that tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm gonna go out on a little bit of a limb here. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Carolina thirty five, uh New Orleans twenty four. Nice, nice, nice. Five touchdowns. Yeah, I dig it. Well, you know, it could happen in other ways, but yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 I can see that, man. I was I was thinking along the lines of like, you know, 29, 21 Panthers. Um, you know, like you said, playing in the in the dome down there, but it's they going they going to get points, man. They they're just dangerous on that damn field. Uh, right. Uh, but you know, DJ DJ acts a fool down there when he can catch the ball. You know, and I hope this is a game where he he's still going to get his targets, which I think he should, because if I'm not mistaken, you know the um, you know Saints cornerbacks are, are not looking too good this year as well. So um, outside of um, Lattimore, who will probably be assigned to Robbie Anderson, mm-hmm. um, I think a, uh, some guy named Ken Crawley is the other starting corner. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, if, if there was anyone that needed a, a strong bounce mount game, it's, it would be DJ Moore, and this would be uh, the perfect opportunity to uh, to help wash down the bitterness of his of his performance. You know, this past game against the uh, against the Bears, because I, I think he has like now like five drops on the season. That's crazy. That is though. I mean, you're supposed to be a pro, bro. Yeah, man, you in your third year. So, anyway, um, I'm hoping to see a little, a little more armor action in this game. Um, I, I, as you guys always know, I, I listen to the radio while, while I'm watching the game. If I'm not at the game itself, and um, you know, um, Kirk Coleman is one of the uh, one of the radio personalities, and he was talking about how the you know 13 personnel was really getting it done. In the running game, uh, and it, you know, that's uh, that's one running back and three tight ends. And he he said he said we we were really putting in work on the Bears with that. So I'm, I'm hoping to see something like that come out at, at the Saints, and we just you know just pound them in the face. Um, and, and again, get that play action going, man. That play action is nice because we have the type of personnel that all they need is a crack, get that ball in their hands, and take off, and then we can get chunk yards very quickly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so. So I, I, w- I would like to see that, man. A little bit. Come on, Arma. Get that, give him the ball, coach. <laughs> <laughs> get that man the ball. Shoot. Big man hungry. I know, right? Feed him a bone or two. Right, come on, coach. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Come on, come on, man. Oh, man. So uh, that's Sunday, 1 p.m.? Yeah, I th- yeah, that's a uh, 1 p.m. game. Yeah. 1 p.m. game. Yeah, man. Y'all make sure you watch that because um, I don't know about y'all, but I love I love watching a bounce back game when when everybody's clicking on all cylinders and they just get it done. Love it, love it, love it. So, uh, Kevin, any party shots? Um, nothing more than always. You know, thanking our fans who support the Four Man Rush and all our social media um, accounts and platforms. Again, we we would never take you guys for granted. Uh, we appreciate every comment, every like, every discussion, whether we agree or disagree. Uh, we just appreciate the feedback and the following. Um, definitely just make sure you keep checking us out uh, tomorrow night um, when this come out. Um, at 9 o'clock, we will be having our All-22 uh, review. It'll be, uh, I think this week it'll be uh, me and Will again. We'll see who else to come along. Uh, we'll break down the f- film of the uh, Bears game. So, um, you know, bring your tissue because it's, <laughs> it's going to be uh, – it's not going to be it's not gonna be fun to look at when we uh, slow this thing now. Wait till y'all see that, boy. Lord of mercy. Yeah, and, uh, and coming up on Friday, you know, which I, 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 which I did by myself this past Friday, uh, the, um, you know, the All-22 preview of the upcoming game with the Saints. So – uh, see if you know. See how that works out, and and um, yeah, just like I say, just keep tabs on us in all of our formats, and and um, you know, make sure you let everybody know about the four man rush because they're gonna find out about us one way or the other. Dig it, ain't that the truth? Because nobody brings it like the four man rush. Man, <laughs> thorough, just just thorough. It's ridiculous, and we're only we're only getting started, folks. We're only getting started. Right. Jump on board now because you'll get the perks later on. Exactly. Dig it, man. All <laughs> right, Panther Nation. So um, thanks for dropping in for the uh, Four Members podcast. Uh, whether you listen to this in the morning, afternoon, or evening, we hope you are taking care of yourselves and taking care of those around you. Um, as Kevin said, let me reiterate, please check out our, um, uh, our social media platforms, um, our content there. Um, it's exclusive, it's diverse, and it's, it's nothing like any other Panther, uh, Panther media site out there. So y'all check that out. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> and even TikTok too. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all check it out. Y'all check it out. It's good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So um, we will uh, catch you guys on, on the rebound. Um, be sure to catch the all 22 with Kev and Will and uh, shoot. <laughs> get ready for that game on Sunday. And as always, keep pounding.
<laughs> That's a clear. Bam. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, hey, I think we did all right. Yeah. That was, it was thorough. <laughs> hey. I dig it, man. Just throw those stats out there, man. You know, just keep it at 100. Let people know, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's getting, it's getting easier, it seems like. Hey, practice makes perfect, so. And this is episode 70. Hi. Big 7-0, man. Trey Turner episode. Big Trey. <laughs> <laughs> Big Trey. Is he playing the San Diego? Is he? Was he out there? Uh, yeah, he played with the Chargers. Is he, is he dinged up or is he playing? Uh, I don't know if he's back. He was dinged up when we went out there and played him week three. So. Oh, well. Get it together, big guy. Get it together. Yes, sir. So you are you doing the Facebook Live tonight? Yep, I'm jumping in um, and uh, talk with our peeps and um, let them express themselves. You know, <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm sure they got a lot to say still. Oh yeah, you know they do. Shit, I know I do. <laughs> I want to choke shit at DJ. I swear to God, boy. <laughs> Lord of mercy. I could just do a whole live session on DJ alone. This boy, boy, boy. It's all good, man. It's all good. Watch, he'll, he'll come, he'll bounce back. He'll have like, you know, eight targets with seven receptions for a buck 60. And you know, two touchdowns. And yeah. Two touchdowns. That, then I'll shut the hell up. Right, right. <laughs> for now. For now. That was in short weeks, man. They'll get you too, man. Shit. Playing hey, on yeah. Sunday and then playing again Thursday? Well, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. All right, brother, man. Appreciate you, dude. Yeah, I appreciate you too, Tim. Smashing it, man. We'll keep it going. Hey, you know how we do. Got to get it. Sir. Let's <laughs> go. Oh, man. Hey, good luck, man. And uh, shoot, I'll see you on the chat chat. Yes, sir. Take it easy. Yes, sir. I'm just taking time to really let it breathe. So, baby, just chill. She love it, we out in public and we can just chill with my partners and we can go back to my crib and just chill out the covers and do we come in and you love us. The Foreman Rush is brought to you by the love and respect of and for the Carolina Panthers and Carolina Panther fans everywhere. Keep pounding. The Four Men Rush is a non-affiliate of the Carolina Panther organization. All thoughts, assessments, and content of this podcast is directly related to the Four Men Rush exclusively. Thank you.